Well, I'm violating our Advent principle, and I brought out the Christmas sweater early uh, <laughs> because of the topic we're going to talk about. So a lot of uh, a lot of people are interested in the date of December 25th mm -hmm. for Christmas, right? Um, I think it's uh, been a common charge that uh, December 25th comes from like a pagan holiday. Yeah. And I've been chopping at the bit to get at this topic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so <laughs> the Christians uh, adopted, right, like a pagan holiday yeah. and, and turned it into Christmas. And you've done more of the, the research and the legwork on this. I've, it's never been something I was like that interested in, to be honest, I've never looked it up. So since you've done the legwork, I figured we could just do more of like an interview format where I can kind of ask you uh, what yeah. you've learned. Yeah. Sure, yeah. So. And I, it, it really comes from, I was really upset in undergrad because, you know, you get that secular person <laughs> in undergrad, the cynic who wants to raise their hand and say, oh, you Christians just celebrate <laughs> Easter or Christmas just because the it was a pagan Ishtar. festival or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but what, what really digs that at you is is this kind of underlying motive that's there with the, with the cynic. And, and that is that, you know, Christianity is just another one of those religions, part of the history of religions. World religion. Yeah, yeah that mm -hmm. takes over what it was previously Previously, there, there's nothing unique to its own religiosity, yeah. and, and therefore, it's just another one of man's invented religions to cope with our uh, anxiety <laughs> yeah. the, of rational, being rational beings. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the the first, or at least one of the first uh, ideas that pops up is that um, this was the Saturnalia uh, feast for the yeah. pagans. So is that what, what? What do you think about that? Yeah. So there, there's two feast days that we'll, we'll talk about. The first is Saturnalia. That that Saturnalia, that the this worship of the of Saturn. Right, the god in, in, in the pagan pantheon. Um, that the the Romans did celebrate this festival in late December. That's true, uh, but there's two things that disqualify it for, from explaining how Christians came to observe December 25th as Christmas. Mm -hmm. And the first is that Saturnalia doesn't take place on December 25th. <laughs> That's the obvious one. Um, it, it actually ran from December 17th to December 23rd. Oh, really? So that's okay. the first point. Uh, the second point is, you know, some will say, well, still, it's it's a kind of in the Advent season, you know, so Christians kind of take it over as a, as a seasonal thing. But as we said in our last video, Advent doesn't start for, you know, that the, the, the origins of Advent aren't there for another few centuries. Yeah. So Saturnalia is not actually a good thing to explain why Christians chose the date, specifically December 25th, for Christmas. Yeah. So we can kind of throw Saturnalia okay, right so out the window. That's the first Shift one. that one aside. The second one that they usually bring up, the second pagan holiday on December 25th, is the Dies Natales Solis Invicti. Mm -hmm. So... This is the birthday of the birthday of, of the, the un unconquered sun unconquered god. Sun. Yeah, yeah. So. yeah th this this one has a lot more sticking power, and as we'll 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 talk about, uh, it's really more out of convenience than sheer evidence. Um, a lot of scholars will look at it and say, well, there's these pieces of evidence that we kind of put together um, that that we can say, yeah, it, it probably happened, right? Because we know that in other instances, other holidays throughout the year, Christians, Christians tend to do tend these kinds to of take things. over pagan holidays. Yeah, like so. even at, like churches, like I you know in my research with that where uh, you would see when missionaries are going to England and they're planting churches mm -hmm. um, they were sort of like mimicking what was going on in Rome because in Rome they were taking like pagan temples and converting them to churches and they would you know something that was to all the gods like the pantheon right it was to yeah. all the gods now it was to, to Mary the St. Martyrs. Mary and, and the <laughs> yeah. martyrs and, and yeah. the martyrs yeah, right so well the, the first thing to say about Dies Natalia Solis Invicti is that nowhere in the written evidence or any artifacts ever found from the ancient world, does it state that there was a pagan holiday on December 25th? No. Um, it, it, even specifically uh, um, for the unconquered sun god. Really? So there's no document, nothing from the ancient world that says this. Um, it was the winter solstice, though, before the, before the fourth century. Um, so, in fact, no pagan festival whatsoever was celebrated on December 25th. It was so, actually we can say irrelevant to the Roman pagans. <laughs> that wow. there, was, okay. there was nothing celebrated there. So it, it really begs the question, well, so where do, you, <laughs> okay, so where do the scholars come where up with? Where do the scholars it, come, uh, up, come up with? The theory? And, and so they take, they take three points of evidence. And the first point of evidence is that Emperor Aurelian in the year 274 kind of elevates the sun god, Sol Invictus, in the Roman pantheon, and he institutes games. However, he doesn't, there's no dates given for those games. Scholars are unsure what the dates were, right? Mm -hmm. So we're just given the, the evidence of, okay, he elevated the sun god in the pantheon. The second piece of evidence is that in the year 362, Emperor Julian, now this, will, this is a buzzword for, for historians of the ancient world, Emperor Julian is a convert 
from Christianity back to paganism, right? Mm -hmm. And it's in 362 that he writes a hymn to the sun god. And in that hymn, he says, we celebrate uh, games and sacrifices to the sun god at the end of the year, after Saturnalia and before the new year. Mm -hmm. But again, he doesn't say December 25th. And it's kind of odd that he doesn't say December 25th if the whole narrative is that Christians are competing with pagans. Right. You would think that a pagan emperor whose book ended by both a Christian emperor and a Christian emperor would say something about, no, December 25th yeah. is what we... He also kind of tips his, tips his uh, or shows his hand, I should say, um, in the hymn because he tries to link what he's celebrating on December 25th or at the end of December with an ancient, ancient uh, Roman, Roman festival for the sun god and, uh, that King Numa celebrated, right? And so in Rome's <laughs> mythical past, yeah. he's, so that kind of, for a historian, you look at that and you say, well, he's trying to link it to something very ancient, which means it's probably not very ancient. Yeah. Um, well, and, and, and just so people understand, like Emperor Julian loved antagonizing Christianity. Yeah. He, so he was, he was pretty brilliant, actually, in how he, he dealt with Christianity because most Roman emperors were like, well, let's stamp this thing out. Let, you know, let, let's, let's kill the Christians, this kind of thing. But, but Emperor Julian was like, you want to get rid of Christianity? Because he was a Christian, he's like tolerate it yep. because it'll tear itself apart, right? Yep. So he was very, very cynical about Christianity. So you figure, of all people, yeah, like you said, if, have... if Christians would have been like appropriating a pagan holiday, he would have been like, "Are you kidding me?" Like right. he totally would have brought that to the fore. Absolutely. You know? And and his whole his whole game when he was emperor, he's only emperor for three years, but when he was emperor, his whole game was to bring back pagan religiosity yeah. uh, and, and devotion to the pagan god. So, you know, you can, you can take his word with a grain of salt, I guess. The other piece of evidence is that there's the chronograph of 354, which we mentioned in our, in our Advent video. Yeah. This chronograph 354 lists Jesus' Jesus's birthday on December 25th. It does, in another section, also list the birthday of of Invictus. It doesn't say Sol Invictus, so it doesn't say the unconquered sun god, but it does say the birthday of the unconquered on December 25th. But mm -hmm. again, that document is um, is dated to 354. What's interesting here um, is that scholars will then take those three pieces of evidence, Emperor Aurelian in 274, Julian in 362, mm -hmm. and then the chronograph of 354, and put them all three together and say, okay, what the there chronograph is talking about, what uh, Emperor Julian is talking about, is what Emperor Aurelian instituted way back in 274. So, ha! Yeah, so, you yeah. see the pagans were celebrating the birthday of the sun god on December 25th. Okay, so then what I think I hear you saying then is that actually it could it could potentially be the flip where where pagans are almost uh, creating these winter seasons or these winter yeah. festivals in competition with maybe Christianity. So well, how, how ancient then is Christmas, like tw December 25th? Right, right? yeah, so the, 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 the evidence overwhelmingly, I think, bears out that, yes, the Christians had it first and that the pagans were actually competing really? with, yeah. Because you, you do get, and we'll, we'll go through it, but you, you do have evidence of Christians already recognizing December 25th from maybe the second century.